So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome once again to those of you that just joined us. Uh, my name is Bryce. My pronouns are he, him, and I'll be guiding everyone through our session tonight. Uh, to begin, I'd like to say a few important words. As a treaty person, I'm grateful to be able to live, work, and play on this land. Western's campus is located on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabek, the Haudenosaunee, Lenapawak, and Chinonkton nations. These lands are connected to the London Township and Sombra Treaties of 1796 and the Dish with One Spoon Covenant Wampum. Thank you again for being here tonight. I'm joined by my co-host Ryan, a number of staff, faculty, and current students from the Faculty of Social Science, and of course, all of you. Welcome. Let's go through a few housekeeping items before we get going. First of all, this session is being recorded. It will be available on our website in a week or so. You'll be able to find it on the same page you went to to register for this event, welcome.uwo.ca slash presentations. Next, live closed captioning is enabled. If you'd like to turn it on, you'll find the live transcript button on the bottom bar of your Zoom screen. Then you can choose show subtitle or view full transcript. But just remember, this is live closed captioning, so we can't guarantee the accuracy. Next, your video and audio will remain off today, but that doesn't mean we won't be interacting together. We, we will have polls throughout the presentation, and we also want to answer all of your questions. You can submit a question using the Q&A box. You'll find this at the bottom of your screen. You can enter questions now or anytime throughout the presentation. Someone from Western will type an answer to you, and we'll also answer a few questions live at the very end of tonight's presentation. One tip about questions, be as specific as possible to get the best answer. So let's get started with the poll right now. If I can have my co-host Ryan launch the poll, we'd love to know where you're joining us from this evening. Awesome, we got some folks right here in London, elsewhere in Ontario, and then some folks joining us from other provinces and territories in Canada, as well as around the world. Fantastic. Uh, we'd also love to know uh, who you're joining us with tonight. Are you flying solo this evening? Maybe you're watching with uh, a parent or a guardian of yours, a sibling, maybe a friend. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, no matter where you're joining us from or who you're joining us with, we're very glad you're here because we have a lot of exciting information to share about the Faculty of Social Science. So let's get to our schedule for this evening. First off, we're going to have a welcome from Dan Shrubsoul, the Associate Dean for Undergraduate Studies. Then Trish Redger, Manager of Undergraduate Student Services, is going to help you understand what it's really like in the Faculty of Social Science. Things like what courses you could take and what experiential learning opportunities are available. Next up is a mini lecture from Chantelle Richmond. She'll be discussing geographies of Indigenous health and wellness. After that, we're going to get to know some current social science students in a student panel. They will share some of their own experiences here at Western. And finally, before we all join together at the end to answer some questions live, we'll hear from Alan McKechnie. He's going to speak about numbers people and words people and why the world needs both. We hope you'll join us for the entire event, but if you can't, no worries. As I mentioned earlier, there will be a recording available on our website. And don't forget to sign up for our other events this spring. We have a lot of other events coming up. If you haven't attended a Next Steps presentation, we highly recommend you do so. It's helpful for everyone to understand what to do before coming to Western. We also have a special presentation about residents if you're thinking about living in residence or you just want some more information. And last but certainly not least, a presentation from Western Student Experience. If your travel plans permit, we have an in-person event scheduled for May 7th, our spring open house. You'll have an opportunity to tour Western's beautiful campus and learn more about programs, services, and residents. You can sign up on our website, the same place you signed up for this event, welcome.uwo.ca slash presentations. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I now introduce Dan Shrubsoul to welcome you this evening followed by Trish Reger for a faculty overview. Hi, I'm Dan Schultzel, the Associate Dean for Undergraduate Students and Programs. 
within the Faculty of Social Science here at Western. Thanks for spending this evening uh, with us. So why study social science? Well, at the heart of it, people are core to uh, both the problems, causing the problems, as well as implementing th the solutions. Many problems don't have a strict technical or medical solution as the COVID uh, pandemic has shown us with human dimensions such as uh, human uh, rights, the ability of business to uh, undertake uh, uh, their activities. These are considerations that social scientists have uh, top of mind. In addition, issues of sustainability involve interactions among society, environment, and economy. And that it's interaction is core to social science with respect to health and well-being. Sociologists uh, study this uh, uh, quite a bit, as well as geographers who have a, a module in uh, environment and health. Justice and equality. What can we learn from history? Political scientists, what's the role of government in promoting uh, a just uh, society. And in terms of saving the world, our anthropologists and again our geographers are out collecting field data on that aspect of sustainability. And so collectively we cover off the breadth as well as considerable depth in the area of sustainability. Okay, so I'll encourage you to go to the Faculty of Social Science webpage to find out information for prospective students as well as our departments and programs. So once again, thank you for spending uh, your time with us uh, this evening. Hope you consider coming to Western. If you've got questions or comments, certainly there's lots of people within the recruitment office as well as the Faculty of Social Science who you can send an email to. And now I'm gonna pass it off to uh, Trish Regier our Chief Academic Counselor, who will go through the structure of your degree programs here at Western. Thanks very much. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us this evening. I welcome this opportunity to share information about our program in social science with you and make the most of our time together tonight. I'm Trish Regier, the Manager of the Undergraduate Student Services for the Faculty and work out of the Academic Counseling Office in Social Science. Our team is available to provide you with academic support upon your admission to social science. The transition into first year is a very big deal. You'll be faced with lots of excitement and lots of challenges along the way. We are here to support you through these challenges, present you with opportunities for growth, and provide you with advice and guidance on all things academic. Let's get started. Tonight I'll address the following questions you might have about beginning an undergraduate program in social science, such as, how do I build a degree? What courses will I take in first year? And what does a module look like? My hope is that the answers to these questions will address many of the things you've been wondering about in social science and get you excited to begin this journey. I find it's helpful to be aware of the opportunities that exist before you arrive so you know what to expect when you get here. Students accepted into first year social science are accepted into a general program. In other words, you don't need to declare what program you plan to pursue in your first year. This leaves you with ample opportunity to explore the courses required for your intended degree with space to include courses that speak to your strengths and interests. First year students must also include a breadth requirement. So at least one credit in first year must be chosen from the Faculty of Arts and Humanities or the Faculty of Science. This allows for an exploration of courses from other areas. Being a general first year means you can survey different disciplines before narrowing down your program of study, which brings me to our second point. In March of your first year, you will be asked to submit an intent to register form. This tells us that you plan to return to social science for your second year and lets us know what program you would like to declare as your degree. It's not until you are almost done your first year with us that we ask you to commit to a program. The hope is that after having spent a good amount of time in your courses, that you will have a clear picture on what you wish to study for your degree. Sometimes this reinforces the choices you made upon applying to social science, 
Sometimes it can introduce you to new areas that you hadn't thought of pursuing until now. Sometimes it may narrow things down for you if there were multiple areas you are interested in studying, and sometimes it might just confuse you even more. This is where your academic counselor and departmental advisors can help, so please connect with us along the way with any questions. In a moment, you will see that we work with a modular system when building a degree. Your first year courses act as the foundational building blocks for the modules you hope to include in your degree. This allows you to include modules that match your interests, strengths, and goals. That being said, there are limits to the number of modules students can include in their degree. Our most popular degree is a four-year Bachelor of Arts, which is made up of 20 credits. Let's take a look and see how those first-year foundational courses fit in with the modular system to build a degree. Full-time students in first year normally take five credits at the 1,000 level, as we can see here. This student comes to social science with an interest in both psychology and economics. In order to build a module in psychology, students must complete one credit in first year psychology to keep that door open. The same is true for economics. This accounts for two of the five first year courses needed. So how do we fill the other three credit requirements? This is where summer academic orientation comes in. Each summer, first year students are invited to connect with our experts in summer academic orientation to discuss areas of interest, strengths, degree options, and to make first year course choices. Summer academic orientation staff are well versed on the first year requirements for students in social science. They know that any student who expresses an interest in pursuing psychology or economics is best to include a first year math as part of their foundation credits which is why math is represented in this student's first year selections. Summer academic orientation staff can look at your math background from high school and determine what math courses you are eligible to take that will fulfill the first year math requirements for both psychology and economics to make sure you are on track for building modules in both areas. We encourage you to research your areas of interest before connecting with summer academic orientation staff, but help will be available so you are able to make informed decisions about your first year credits before enrolling. In this scenario, our first year student expressed a love of literature and did well in high school English, so wants to continue on with a course that is familiar to them. Not only does English speak to this student's strength and ability, but this course also qualifies as part of the breadth requirements we touched on earlier. Because first year English is offered by the Faculty of Arts and Humanities, this student is fulfilling their breadth requirement for one credit taken from either the Faculty of Arts and Humanities or the Faculty of Science in their first year. After speaking with staff at summer academic orientation, this student narrowed down their last course choice to geography and environment. After discovering that their first year geography not only covers physical geography, but also human geography, the environment, and geographical information systems. Now that this student has chosen their full complement of first year courses, they've included foundation credits for modules in psychology, economics, English, and geography and the environment. We can see that our first year student has now progressed into second year and has decided to pursue a double major in psychology and economics as planned. A major module offered in social science typically consists of six credits. So with two majors, our student will be responsible for 12 modular credits in total, six for the major in psychology and six for the major in economics, as illustrated here. You'll notice that there is space in each year of study for elective credits that need to be fulfilled to bring this student's total credits to 20. Elective credits can be fulfilled with breadth or essay credits if still needed, or with courses that are in an area of interest, perhaps that act as prerequisites to a post-degree or graduate program that a student might be interested in pursuing. In social science, we offer a number of modules. An honor specialization, which normally consists of nine credits, allows students to take a heavier concentration of courses in a subject area at the highest level offered. This is normally the module chosen by students who want to keep the door open for graduate school. An honor specialization requires that students achieve marks in the 70% plus range. A specialization is also nine credits, but may not require that students take courses at the same level as an honor specialization. Marks in the 60% plus range are acceptable for a specialization. A major, as we've seen, is normally made up of six credits 
and a minor is normally made up of four credits and can be taken as an add-on to a major, specialization, or honor specialization. Students who declare a double major program can have the honors designation added to their degree so long as their marks are in the 70% plus range and higher. Modules can be combined as we've seen and there is freedom to include modules from other faculties as a social science student. This provides ample flexibility for those students interested in pursuing modules from a variety of different disciplines. Thank you for joining us this evening. We hope to see many of you in September 2022. Being a successful student involves your engagement in both the academic and the experiential learning opportunities that Western has to offer. And this combination is a great way to develop the knowledge and skill set necessary for success in university. And these skills are transferable to all of your future endeavors, whether they be academic or career related. I'll now pass it over to my colleagues in the Social Science Internship Program. Have a good evening. Good evening, my name is Diana Milanovic and I am the Experiential Learning Coordinator for the Faculty of Social Science. All undergraduate students at Western have the opportunity to participate in some form of experiential learning where they can strengthen their human skills, engage in complex problems, and explore interests in community or corporate environments. As a Western social science student, one of the core experiential learning opportunities available to you will be paid internship. When completing an internship, students apply their knowledge in new ways, strengthen their employability, and connect with coworkers who can offer new and diverse perspectives in a professional setting. An internship is your opportunity to gain paid career-related work experience before graduation. You'll have access to career support services to assist you in the hiring process while an internship and afterward. We're in your corner as you navigate the workplace for potentially the first time, and we want you to succeed. Internship is also a way to apply your classroom learning and help create practical solutions to social problems. During internship, you will discover your strengths, evaluate your professional interests and values, and begin to prototype your career options early on. Lastly, completing an internship will broaden your professional network. Internship supervisors have been known to support our past interns with references, ongoing mentorship, and entry-level job offers post-graduation. So what do we offer? Western Social Science Internship Program has two main pathways to incorporate work integrated learning into your degree plan. The first is the short term internship, which is a four month work term available to you after second, third or fourth year. It is typically taken in summer term and you may participate more than once to gain exposure to a variety of workplace environments. There is also the option to extend your degree by one year to incorporate a long term internship experience after your third year of study. This longer commitment has the benefit of building deeper relationships with your employer and allows you time to grow into new responsibilities over the course of your contract. Both opportunities allow students to earn an elective credit toward their degree. To be eligible for internships, students must maintain an average of 70% and be in a full-time module within the faculty. International students are welcome to apply. The internship course itself incorporates reflective activities and a final assignment that is designed to assist you with skills articulation and help you design the next steps in your career journey. Students enrolled in our program also have access to hundreds of postings in Western Connect and dedicated staff to guide you through the application process and source opportunities with inter industry partners. This workshop schedule just provides a glimpse of the range of topics we can support you with, from job search strategies to compelling cover letters or interviewing in a virtual world. Our social science students are in demand. In the 2020-2021 academic year, we received over 600 postings from employers seeking talent. I've included a few example positions that students have held in the past few years, as well as a small sample of companies we work with on a regular basis. We see students primarily hired for positions in the Greater Toronto or London area, but some of our students have worked outside of Ontario as well. Over the last 18 months, the option to work remotely has in some ways broadened student opportunities with particular companies that previously may have been out of reach due to location. I hope this information has been a helpful introduction to the program we offer through the Faculty of Social Science. If you have any questions at all about our program, please feel free to review the website or reach out to the email provided here. Thank you very much uh, to Trish Regeer for that wonderful faculty overview. Uh, and as you heard Trish mention, uh, summer academic orientation is a great resource for those of you that are 
looking to choose first year courses. So registration should open up sometime in May and those one-on-one -on -one, uh, summer academic orientation appointments typically run from mid-June until mid-August. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, if you Google UWO SAO or summer academic orientation, you'll be able to find the website and uh, register once that becomes available. So thank you again, Trish. Uh, we're now gonna pass it off to Chantel Richmond for our first mini lecture of the evening. Okay, Ani Bojo, Gizis Kwe Dijnikas, Makododam, Bigitagong Nishnabek and Dunjaba. Hello and welcome. My name is Chantel Richmond, and I am an associate professor in the Department of Geography and Environment at Western University. And here I hold the Canada Research Chair on Indigenous Health and the Environment. I am um, really happy and, and very honored to stand here today. Um, here at Western University, but more, I guess, specifically in the music building, we are just a few hundred meters away from Deshken Zibing, which is the river that connects Western with the local communities of the Anishinaabek, the Haudenosaunee, and the Lene Lenapoak people. And these peoples have lived in this place since time immemorial. So as, as people who are um, working and, and living in this area, we are welcome visitors um, in these traditional lands. And I am really happy um, to make that connection because I am Anishinaabe from Northern Ontario. My home community uh, sits actually just on the North Shore of Lake Superior. I introduced to you uh, myself in Anishinaabe Moan, which is the language of, of my people. And I told you that I come from Begitagong Anishinaabek. And um, that's important because it is the place that claims me. It's the place where I come from. It's the place where I have grown, uh, come to understand and know who I am. So, in, in my training, I'm a, a geographer, and more specifically, the work that I do is, um, is focused on the geographies of Indigenous health. So this is a very new, really exciting discipline in uh, critical human geography. And the whole goal of our discipline really is to engage Indigenous communities around questions about health and the environment. So how is the health and wellness of indigenous people and communities affected by the environments that they live in, that they work in, that they play in? And this focus and this emphasis on wellness of indigenous communities and the places that they live their lives in is very important because indigenous peoples have a very relational worldview. So whether we're looking at the very local context, so you know, specific uh, communities in Canada, or we're looking at globally far communities, so communities in Hawaii or New Zealand, for example, Indigenous peoples have this common understanding of relatedness between individual health, the wellness of their families, their communities, their nations, uh, the places that they come from, the ancestors who, who have brought them here, and also a commitment to our future generations. So that is a relational understanding and those principles of connection, sustainability, really permeate into the ways that we understand our responsibilities to care for the earth. And so it makes really good sense for me coming from this way of knowing to land in geography because geographers care about the land much in the same way that indigenous peoples care about the land. You know, a lot has changed in the ways that universities see and understand the roles of Indigenous people. And in, you know, the last at least couple decades, there's been this really exciting shift where we're seeing many more Indigenous people as learners, as faculty members, as staff members, 
And it's exciting because this means that as we try to um, create spaces and overcome the huge inequalities that we see in many Indigenous communities, we're able to leverage the resources of universities in ways that make sense in our local communities, um, using our own knowledge systems, our own customs and traditions and life ways to be self-determining people. Not long ago, um, Indigenous people were not welcome in the university, and so a lot has changed. This is an exciting time. It's never been more exciting, and I want you all to come and learn with us. Thank you very much, Chantel, for that insightful mini lecture. I'm starting to see some more uh, questions come into the Q&A box. So don't forget, if you have a question uh, that's on your mind, feel free to type one in there and someone from Western will get back to you shortly. Uh, if you see this question has been answered live show up, that means we're saving that question for our live Q&A at the end of the presentation. So we're gonna try our best to get to all of your questions. Thank you again, Chantel. And now that you've had a chance to learn a little bit more about social science at Western, you got to experience a mini lecture, uh, we'd like to know what you're most looking forward to when you start at Western. So if I can have my co-host Ryan launch that poll, what is it you're most excited about at Western? Is it your program and choosing courses, maybe meeting some new people? If you're not from London, maybe it's moving away from home. Awesome, so a lot of you are excited about all of those things. Wonderful. Uh, next poll is a bit of a trivia question. We'd like to know which one of these Western celebrities, or uh, sorry, which one of these celebrities went to Western and is celebrating a birthday today? All righty. Oh, we got about 50% got the right answer there. Very nice. Marvel superhero Simu Liu is in fact a Western alum and is celebrating a birthday today. But Roberta Bondar, Lainey Liu, and DJ duo Loud Luxury are also proud Western alumni. Fantastic. And last question for you tonight. Um, have you decided if you'll be joining us here at Western this fall. Wonderful. We have some folks saying, yes, can't wait to get here. I think so. Not official just yet. And maybe there's a few of you that are still waiting or making a decision not to worry. There's still time. Uh, if you're an Ontario high school student right now, maybe you haven't heard about an offer of admission. There are more rounds to go out. Uh, so try your best to be patient. Keep working hard and hopefully you will hear from us very soon. All right, uh, I'd like to now welcome our social science students from Western. So if I can have Savannah, Jenna, and Pe'er to join me on screen. Welcome everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's exam time right now here at Western, so uh, I, we, we really appreciate you carving some time out of your schedules. Um, I guess we'll get started, if you don't mind, uh, just giving a brief introduction. So your name, where you're from, and maybe what you're studying here at Western. Sure, I can kick it off. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Savannah. I am in my third year here at Western, and I'm currently pursuing an honor specialization double major in sociology and criminology. Um, I'm from a small town near Windsor, Ontario. It's called Leamington, and yeah. Thank you very much, Savannah. I'm from Windsor myself, so I'm very familiar with Leamington, southwestern Ontario represent. Uh, all right, uh, Jenna, Pear, whoever would like to go next. I can go next. Um, my name is Jenna. I'm also in my third year at Western. I am doing an honors double major in psychology and criminology, and I am from Mississauga, Ontario. Thank you, Jenna. Um, and I'm Pe'er. Um, I'm in my second year here at Western, um, and I'm pursuing an honor specialization in international relations, um, and I'm from Richmond Hill, so not too far from you, Jenna. 
Awesome. Thank you so much for those introductions. Uh, so I guess we'll get started off. We have some different uh, programs, areas of study here, which is wonderful. Uh, I'd love to know maybe if there's a course you've taken so far here at Western uh, that you really enjoyed. So a favorite course, or maybe it was a favorite professor, something that kind of stuck with you uh, during your time here at Western. Um, honestly, I think my favorite course so far has not been in sociology or criminology, which sounds really bad, but um, I'm currently in, in geography of tourism, so it's in social science as well. Um, it's a second year course, basically studying um, tourism and how it relates um, socially to our world. Um, so I'm currently loving that, and I'm also loving the professor, so highly recommend that course. Thank you, Savannah. I think that uh, speaks to some of the flexibility that, uh, that uh, Western and especially social science permits, getting to experience some classes that are maybe outside that main area of study. So thank you very much. I think for me, my favorite course so far has been Psychology 2032, which is the psychology of crime and corrections. I know it's a really popular course. Um, if you're into the crime aspect of the psychology side, I really recommend it. I love it because it's kind of right at the intersection of my two degrees. Um, I thought it was really interesting. And so if you're interested in that, I definitely recommend looking into that course when you come to Western. Thank you, Jenna. Uh, my favorite class has been a classic for Western. It's Poli Sci 1020. It's the first year political science class that a lot of you may want to take. Um, uh, Professor Narain and Boosfield run that course half half. Um, and it does a really great job of breaking down how poli sci has emerged as a discipline, but also how it's applicable to our world today. And so I, I really think it's a great um, foundational course um, to take if you're interested in poli sci. Thank you very much, Pair. All right, moving on. Um, what are some of the ways that you've gotten involved here on campus? So maybe it's joining a club, maybe some intramurals, jobs, um, experiential learning. Uh, what are the, some, some of the ways you've been involved? Um, so throughout my four like short years here at Western, um, I've made it my goal to kind of get involved as much as I possibly can. So in first year, I joined Social Science Students Council as a first year rep. Um, and then last year in my second year, I was able to sit on the USC as a social science counselor. So I represented the social science faculty at the university level. Um, and then this year, alongside Jenna, we were both academic conference um, coordinators for the social science academic conference, which was an amazing opportunity to connect um, with our faculty academically. Um, also, Western is great because there's a, lots of cultural clubs. So um, I have a am of Italian heritage. So I'm involved in Chow Western, which is an Italian club here. Um, I'm also a competitive dancer. So I'm on um, the dance force team here. So I've spent a lot of my time at Western getting involved on clubs and it's really contributed to my experience. Thank you kindly. Yeah, I think one of the great things about Western is there's so many different things to get involved with. Um, like Savannah said, I was on the Social Science Students Council this year, and I loved that experience. I think it's a great way to get more involved in the Western community and to be more involved in your faculty. I'm also um, an incoming executive member of Western's Club Learning It Together, which is a mentorship program for youth in the London area, which is something that I've been in since my second year. And I really enjoyed that. In my first year, I did intramurals with my four. We had a soccer team, and that was a great way to meet people, get to know each other, um, my residents also had a girls like football team, which I was involved in, and I've also just been involved in a bunch of other clubs just as a general member as a way of just getting involved in the Western community a bit more, which has um, all been great experiences as well. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Jenna. Um, I guess it's me now. Uh, so I think that Western has a club for literally every type of passion or path that you want to pursue. Um, and I think that my experience with clubs has really reflected the different aspects of what I think I want to do with my life. Um, so I'm really involved with the Social Science Students Council, which speaks to my passion for advocacy and student governance. Um, I'm also uh, part of the Western Gazette, which is our student newspaper on campus. It's one of the largest in Canada, and we just won um, number one student publication. Um, so we're really proud of that. And that speaks to my 
wanting desire to explore journalism and what that has to offer. Um, but then I'm also very involved with Model United Nations on campus, which then helps me explore my passion for global affairs and whether or not I want to pursue something like that moving on. So I think that um, no matter what it is that you want to do, you have an ability to explore it outside the classroom. Um, and that's a really great opportunity that Western offers. Thank you so much. So it sounds like the three of you are very, very busy, um, involved in so many things. And I think that's wonderful. Uh, like Pair mentioned, you can explore those passions that maybe you um, learned about or discovered in class, you can then take them outside of class and, and explore them even further in these, uh, these clubs and extracurricular opportunities. So uh, fantastic. I, I was just wondering how, uh, do you have any advice for kind of juggling all of those extracurriculars with your coursework? Um, any advice for maybe our incoming students on how you, you juggled uh, all of that? So maybe we'll, we'll switch up the, the batting order here and maybe uh, Pear can, can lead us off this time. Sure. Um, I think you really do figure it out as you go along. Um, once you start to adapt to first year and the course load, um, you'll find that a lot of the clubs serve as a great time to not only explore your passions, but socialize too. So um, you get both in one. So, you know, take time away from studying by going to those club meetings um, and socializing with others and finding like-minded people. So I think that my advice is just to see clubs as an opportunity for more than just like getting involved extracurricularly, curricularly, um, but also just making friends and having fun, so. Thank you very much. Over to you, Jenna. Um, yeah, as Pierre said, a lot of it is just kind of figuring out as you go along. I know it can be really overwhelming in first year, but I think one of the important things is too, is when you're in first year, you kind of have that ability to kind of plan your schedule and pick your course and class times that would work for you. So you kind of have a bit of more flexibility to incorporate those times to have um, those club meet up, meetups or hangouts or go to those events. And um, yeah, it's definitely possible. Um, um, getting involved with the clubs and everything is a great experience. And it also definitely helps you work on your time management skills as well. And there's varying roles you can take on in clubs as well. So if you um, are looking to have, you have a bit more time, you're looking to have a bigger role in a club, you can maybe go for a, an executive position or take on a bigger role. Or if you don't have as much of a um, time to dedicate to that, but you still wanna be involved, you can join as a general member. So there's a lot of flexibility um, in that sense, which is really good. Thank you, Jenna. Yeah, that, that's an excellent point that uh, your involvement in those clubs can also uh, vary uh, greatly. So uh, depending on the time commitment you do have, you know, you can uh, either just be a general member or like you said, maybe look for an executive position if it's something you're, you're really passionate about. And over to you, Savannah. Yeah, so of course, echoing um, what Pa'er and Jenna said as well. Um, also, something that I think is important to keep in mind, as great as clubs are in getting involved and meeting new people, we also want to, you know, remember why we're here at Western is to get our degree and to um, be here in that sense. So I think, you know, for me in first year, I was super involved, got involved in everything. And then I was like, oh wait, my grades are slipping a bit. So it's really important to find that balance. So what I ended up doing is I kind of created like a schedule for myself every day where this may seem a little bit much, but I planned like every hour of my day what I was gonna do. Um, some students find that really helpful, but just to make sure that I'm not giving too much dedication to clubs or too much to academics. So yeah, finding a balance is really crucial. Wonderful. So using a, a calendar or, or a planner to kind of structure that time and then decide what, uh, what you have to give to each um, area of interest for you. Wonderful. Um, next question uh, before we get to uh, our final two. This is, this is a quick one, um, but just do you have a favorite place to study on campus and do you have a favorite spot to stop to grab a bite to eat? Um, sorry. Or do you want to go first? Yeah, go first. Okay. I mean, like, I'm not as experienced as you because I'm only a second year, um, but I really do love the UCC. And I think that you'll find that when you're involved in clubs, some of them have like specific places where they'll have like their own little room. I love to go to like the social science office or like the Gazette office and just like study there. Um, and the spoke is a classic. So that's my go-to. 
I personally have been spending a lot of time at Weldon recently, which is Western's like sort of main library. And it's also under construction right now. So it's um, very aesthetically pleasing now. It looks great. Um, so I like to go to Weldon and just find a spot near like the big windows if I can't find room on the first floor. Anywhere near big windows I like. And uh, I definitely agree with the spoke. The spoke is definitely the go-to for every Western student, I think. <laughs> Um, my favorite study spot on campus is the Social Sci reading room. Um, it's located in the basement of Social Sci building, and it's honestly just really nice. It's super quiet, which I really like to study in. Um, and then, of course, my favorite um, restaurant is the Spoke, but I'm going to also introduce the Wave, which is like the Spoke's like sister kind of more restaurant where to sit down it's nice to grab a a nicer meal with friends if you're taking a study break um yeah so i also like the wave awesome yes the, the wave and spoke definitely uh, popular options i i stopped at the spoke myself today to grab a bagel of course um so great options there and, and i think everyone will kind of find during their time at western a, a favorite study spot uh, and you can mix it up right I mean, there's some areas that are you know, kind of designated quiet spaces, other uh, spaces that lend themselves to, to collaboration and, and chatting amongst group members or team members or friends. So uh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, last, uh, sorry, our uh, second last question here um, is what kind of advice would you give uh, your high school self about making that transition to university? So we have some uh, I'm sure some attendees in the crowd that are about to make that transition. So what advice would you give? Um, I would probably tell myself that it is a lot easier to succeed in classes and programs that you are passionate about. Um, university is all about exploring the things that you think that you're going to do with your life, but also just like you don't have to take those compulsory courses, all the comp compulsory courses you might have had to take in high school. So really just take the time to explore what you're passionate about. And I promise you that it'll be a lot easier to succeed. Thank you very much, Bear. Uh, over to Jenna. Um, I think I would tell myself to not be so nervous. I know the transition to first year is a very nerve wracking experience, but that everything's going to work itself out. And I think another important thing is to know that your university experience is going to be what you make of it. So getting involved, putting yourself out there and meeting new people, like Pierre said, taking those classes and um, finding your passions, it's all really important to the overall experience. And it just will help you a whole lot in making your university experience really well-rounded and a lot more enjoyable as well. Thanks a lot, Jenna. And Savannah? Um, I was actually going to echo a lot with Jenna of what Jenna just said, but I can remember um, coming into university and being really nervous and scared, but I've honestly realized some advice is that like, honestly, just accept this with open arms. It is what it is. And, you know, you will make it through um, definitely graduating in a year. There's a lot of things that I look back on and say, why was I so scared to do that? Or why didn't I just let it go and roll with the punches? Um, so I think that, you know, they say high school is the best four years of your life, but I have to say for me, um, university has been. So I'm looking forward to what you guys all have coming up for you. Thank you very much for sharing that. Yeah, there's a, a mix of emotions there. There's some excitement, I'm sure, some little bit of nerves, but uh, thank you kindly for, for sharing that advice. Uh, and our final question of the night uh, is, what made you choose Western? So maybe we'll have, we'll have Jenna lead us off, and then Savannah, and then Pa'er can close out the student panel. Yeah, so when I started looking into schools in grade 11 and 12, I um, I was just always really intrigued by Western. I had always heard really great things about the school. I'd known a few people that had gone to Western and had just nothing but great things to say about the school. So it was kind of going to Western was always kind of in the back of my mind. And then once it actually came around to getting a, to learning more about the school and getting able to visit the campus, um, from there, I just knew that it was where I wanted to go. Just the campus is beautiful. Um, it wasn't too far from home, but it was still a good distance from home where I had that new independence. Um, I was able to meet um, some new people and meet some professors and get to know more about the degree structure. And just from being on the campus, um, I definitely think if you have the opportunity to come to campus, 
it'll definitely help you making your decision. It definitely helped me make mine. Um, so yeah, there's just so much that Western has to offer. And when I got to learn more about it and actually be on campus, I just knew that it was the place for me and I do not regret my decision at all. Thank you very much, Jenna. Yes, we have that spring open house coming up on May 7th. So just as Jenna said, try and get here on campus. Uh, picture It's much easier to picture yourself and feel uh, like you're attending school here if you have a chance to visit. So May open house, uh, spring open house, pardon me, May 7th, Saturday, May 7th, come check us out. All right, um, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, Savannah, Savannah, go ahead. It's all good. Um, so actually, when I was in high school, I said I would never go to Western, um, ironically. Um, I don't know why, um, but my mom said, no, you're going to go to the fall open house where you're going to step on campus. And I have never turned back, actually, in my uh, grade 12 year, I went to the fall open house. And much of what Jenna just said, the atmosphere, um, the beautiful buildings around me, you know, I got to a lot of uh, meet a lot of like profs that I actually have now and that really intrigued me a lot of people say you know western's so big there's so many students you get so lost but I find if you get involved and you create the connections with your professors you really have an environment to thrive in which I've noticed um, yeah I again would never imagine myself anywhere else um, I'm so glad I chose to become a mustang and yeah I hope all of you do too <laughs> Thank you very much, Savannah. We're glad you chose to become a Mustang as well. And uh, we, we've had a few um, during these faculty nights, students reach out and kind of mention something similar about, you know, Western's campus might seem large and like there's a lot of students, but you do make uh, a lot of those quality connections with uh, fellow classmates and professors, which, which certainly makes it feel a lot more, uh, a lot smaller and, and very close knit. So thank you, Savannah. And off to Fair. Um, so in high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do, but I knew that I had a lot of different passions. Um, I loved political science, but I also loved history, and I also wanted to pursue business. Um, and I found that Western was really the only school that allowed me to integrate all those passions into one sort of four-year path. Um, and so what I ended up choosing was uh, international relations, which is a combination of both history and poli sci, um, but then also I have the possibility of going to Ivy for my last two years or pursuing something else after that. And so I think that a Western really gave me the flexibility I needed to feel sure that whatever path I choose within Western, um, there's so much there for me. And I think that um, like post-grad, there is just so much that I could do with my degree that I'm not like closed in or boxed in anywhere. Um, and Western was really the only school that provided me with that opportunity. Um, so if you're one of those people who isn't exactly sure, but are passionate about a whole variety of things, um, this is definitely the place for you. Thank you so much for, for mentioning that. I think uh, it speaks definitely to the, the flexibility and uh, the, the modular structure where you can combine a few different passions. And, and like you said, not only at the undergraduate level, but postgraduate studies as well, if that's something you're interested in. So we're, we're very glad that, that Western uh, offered you a program that was uh, perfectly suited for you. And um, yeah, thank, thank you again to, to, to all three of you for taking some time out of your busy schedules. I'm sure you have some, some finals coming up, uh, be it exams or papers, projects. So Thank you very, very much for being here uh, and best of luck as we finish out the school year. So thank you again. Thank you. All righty. So I hope everyone enjoyed our student panel. Uh, and before we get to our live Q&A at the end of the night, we're gonna hear one more uh, mini lecture, this time from Alan McEachern. Hi, I'm Alan McEachern and I teach in the Department of History. How do we know about the existence of climate change? We look for indicators of past climates and we compare it to the present. To understand past climates, scientists look at ice cores and lake sediments and tree rings, things like that. But it's not just scientists looking and it's not just looking at scientific data. As a historian, I research and write and teach climate history using largely textual sources. So I'll look at weather diaries of fur traders and farmers, observations by naturalists, and photographs that provide evidence of glacial retreat. Now, some years ago, I was at um, Environment Canada's headquarters in 
uh, Downsview, Ontario. And because I'm a historian, they show me all the old stuff. So they took me down to the basement, and there in the basement were rows and rows and rows of boxes like this of weather observations, daily weather observations, dating back to when Farman Canada's founding in 1871. This one is from uh, Manitoba in the 1880s. Tens of thousands of observers, most of them volunteers, documenting the weather all across Canada, one of the largest nations on earth, and sending them on to Downsview for 150 years. That is really the foundation of our Canadian weather forecasting system and of our understanding of Canadian climate. And there was no plans to preserve this collection. So I facilitated a data rescue to have this collection uh, come to Western on long-term basis. And apparently this is the largest archival arrangement uh, in history between a Canadian university and uh, the federal government. So history saved, mission accomplished, but, but now what? Like everybody concerned about climate change, which I hope is everybody, I wondered, what can I do? How can I be of help? So I was interested not just in preserving the collection, but in seeing as a historian what kind of new knowledge I could gain from it. And I discovered this. Every form for the entire history of the program has looked essentially like this. A bunch of columns here on the left-hand side uh, with quantitative observations, things like uh, temperature and precipitation. And, but always on the right-hand side of the, of the form was a column for remarks, okay? For words, Environment Canada meteorologists have always used the quantitative data, the numbers, but they had never figured out a way to use the qualitative observations, the words. Never, not in 150 years, but observers kept writing them down. So Western students and I have been uh, transcribing, creating a database, and analyzing these words, the qualitative remarks. We've been most interested in two things. Uh, first, finding an alternative uh, way to document climate change. So many weather observers, as you are uh, probably not surprised, they would note signs of the changing of the seasons, like the first snowfall of the season, when the ice broke up in spring, maybe the first appearance of a bird or a flower in spring. Comparisons of such observations at a single location over a long period can show, for example, that a flower has been blooming two weeks earlier in the spring than it used to. And the second thing we've been doing, the qualitative remarks are revealing what Canadians have known about nature and how they've expressed that knowledge and how that has changed over time. So for example, we discovered, uh, rediscovered, that until the early 1900s uh, on Groundhog Day, Canadians would look for the shadow of the bear, not the groundhog, to predict the rest of the winter's weather. Bear day, who knew? More generally, we have found that compared to observers Today, weather observers of the past had less knowledge of weather, which is not surprising, but they also probably had greater knowledge of their natural surroundings. Let me end here. If you're interested in and learning about and responding to environmental issues or to climate change, there's obviously a lot of work to be done. And some of that work, much of that work, needs to be done in science and engineering. It needs numbers people. But it doesn't just need numbers people, it also needs words people. And that's the kind of work I do and the kind of work you can do at Western. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Alan, for that very insightful lecture. So I know so many of you have been asking questions throughout the event tonight, that is fantastic. Uh, but we are gonna use a little bit of time uh, to answer a few questions live. So if any of our uh, panelists uh, would like to turn their videos on for these questions uh, coming their way. By all means, you can do so now. Uh, I'm going to go through our uh, Q&A section now uh, and dig up some questions. I know we set aside a few of them to be answered live at the end of the evening. Um, also, uh, I would like to say a huge thank you again to all of our uh, volunteers for making this event possible. All right, um, going through our Q&A here, um, I see a question about when students would need to decide what module they would like to pursue, and maybe what are some, some common modules or combinations of modules uh, that, that students might choose? Hi Bryce, I can take that one if you like. 
Um, so students in social science are generally admitted into um, a first year general, um, general year. And it's not actually until year two that you actually um, have to declare what you wanna take. So you have an opportunity to do a lot of exploring of courses in first year before you have to commit to actually um, declaring a module. And it really runs the gamut as to what students might declare. So some may decide that they just wanna stick with a major in history, for example, if that's kind of the area that they really like. But there's a lot of, um, different areas as well that have nice compliments. So we have a lot of students that might be in international relations that might also decide to do a language um, like a minor in French or something along those lines um, or psychology. A lot of students might think about um, med school once they, once they finish. So they might want to include that with a biology major and do a double major in both areas. So you kind of get the opportunity to do the best of both. So there's lots of flexibility there. Um, to make sure that all of your interests are kind of included into that degree. So that's a good combination um, and very tailored to what your interests and strengths are going to be. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Trish. And uh, for those, if you're interested in that honors bachelor degree, you can do um, an honors specialization, honors specialization with a major, major, honors specialization with a minor, and then the double major. Um, so definitely lots of flexibility there and uh, really neat that you're able to kind of combine maybe two interests uh, or two passions of yours um, and kind of tailor your degree to work for you. Uh, I've got another question here uh, and, and I can take this one. Uh, so do you have to apply for the Ivy business program or are you automatically admitted if you meet the qualifications? So students do apply uh, for the Ivy business school. Uh, they do so typically, uh, or they do so in year two at Western. Um, and Ivy would start in year three. Uh, Ivy also has a number of combined degree options with uh, the Faculty of Social Science. So if that's the case and you're admitted to Ivy, start there in year three, uh, and then in years four and five, you would be doing some social science courses as well as your Ivy courses, um, and you would graduate with two degrees in five years. So the combined degree program is a very popular option and uh, lots of um, different honor specializations and whatnot, you can do that with in social science. All righty, um, let's see, just looking through for a couple other questions. Uh, maybe uh, if, if any of our student panelists are still around, I've got a, a question uh, for you. Um, did any of you live in residence? Um, and if you did, maybe which residence you lived in? I can start this one. Um, yeah, so I lived in residence my first year. I was in Delaware Hall, and I love that. I think if you are open to traditional style that I think that it's a great experience for your first year. It's really where you get to meet a lot of people and you get to go to the dining halls and that's where you get to hang out with people too. Um, I also love Delaware just because the location was ideal. Um, I'm pretty sure Delaware is the closest residence building to most of the main buildings on campus. So um, I one day I woke up at 8.50 a.m. and I was able to make my, my 9 a.m. class. Um, so that was super convenient. Um, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I definitely enjoyed the traditional style residence in my first year. Thank you, Jenna. Uh, Savannah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, Savannah. Sorry. I can go next. Um, so I kind of had a, a little bit of a unique situation. Um, I initially moved into Perth Hall, um, which is a hybrid style. Um, and then just because of a little bit of like roommate conflicts, I moved to Ontario Hall, which is like really close. Again, hybrid style. I loved residence in the sense that I was able to meet a lot of people. Um, again, like Jenna said, you know, hang out with people, go for dinner, go for breakfast and um, whatnot. But I also really like residence because you're able to live on campus. Living off campus this year is challenging because, you know, you have to plan travel and bus times and stuff. And I loved residence because you were right there. And again, you can get to the class really quickly. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, Pear? 
I did not stay in residence first year, but I will be a resident staff for MedSid next year. So if any of you are planning on going to MedSid, I might be your RA. Um, I think that a huge part of choosing a residence is number one style. So like what style would you prefer? Um, and then you could check that out on the website, but also location. So I know that like MedSid um, and I think it's Elgin are a lot closer to like Chabad on campus, which is where Jewish students go um, during the Sabbath. So like that's a lot easier for you to walk there than a residence that's further away. Like just an example. So like if anyone has a situation where they would prefer to be closer to something, um, definitely check out where the residence is located um, and try and fit that in when you're choosing your top three options. Wonderful, thank you. Excellent points there too, when you're thinking of, of kind of ranking those uh, residences, uh, thinking about proximity, um, where are you gonna be most often on campus? And then of course, what style, traditional, hybrid, sweet style. Um, so thank you very much for, for sharing those experiences. Uh, and then we have another question about residence here, how it works. Um, so basically, if you are offered residence uh, with your offer of admission, um, there is a prepayment you have to make before June 3rd. Uh, once that prepayment is made, you can submit your residence questionnaire. That's going to ask you uh, where um, you're a little bit about your, your lifestyle. Um, you're going to be able to rank uh, which residence you would prefer. Uh, and then you'll be able to submit that. Uh, and then of course, you also need to accept your offer of admission to Western. So uh, kind of two separate processes there uh, with accepting uh, and paying that prepayment for residence, submit that residence uh, questionnaire, and then accept your offer to Western as well. All right, um, I'm seeing another question here, how do roommate requests work? So if you have a friend that you're interested in um, living with, uh, you can fill out the roommate or the uh, residence questionnaire. And as long as you fill it out exactly the same and indicate that you would like to uh, live with that friend, then uh, housing should be able to match you up in a room together. Um, the prepayment for residence. So all that information can be found on your choose portal at choose.uwo.ca. Uh, and then you'll be able to access your housing portal from there where you can make that prepayment. All right. Okay, um, one more question. Uh, I, I see this come up a lot. Um, maybe uh, if we can just briefly touch on the difference between uh, the BA, so the Bachelor of Arts, and the BSC, Bachelor of Science in Psychology. So how do those programs differ? I can take that one too. Um, so the Bachelor of Arts uh, in Psychology is going to require first year psych and then a first year data science and math course only. Whereas the Bachelor of Science, um, although it is from psychology, um, there are some science requirements that are, are part of that particular degree. So a first year biology is also required. Um, and then one other science, usually from a list um, that includes computer science, um, physics, I believe. I can't remember what else is on there. Um, and then as you go through and do the honor specialization in psych as a BSc, there are at least two additional um, either basic medical science or science courses that you do have to have to take as part of that um, particular module. And when you're taking your thesis, for example, you would do more of the bio psych end of things than you would say a social psych. So that's where the big difference lies between the two. Awesome, thank you so much, Trish. So yeah, if, if you're maybe currently in high school right now, you're really loving those science courses, uh, the BSc in psychology might be uh, the choice for you because it will have kind of more that scientific lens. Uh, and then that, uh, that BA, Bachelor of Arts in Psychology, is also another great option. So thank you very much. Um, and I think that is just about it. Um, we uh, will stick around for a few more minutes and uh, type away on, on any other incoming questions. Um, but that will conclude our live Q&A portion of the evening. So once again, a huge thank you to all the volunteers that uh, took times out of their schedule to be here with us tonight. 
And thank you to all of you for doing the same. All of our attendees, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, we hope you got all the information you needed out of this evening. But if something comes up later on, there's always ways to connect with us. So if you go to welcome.uwo.ca, there's lots of ways to get in touch with us. Um, there's our Unibuddy platform where you can talk to staff and current students. Uh, and you can also email welcome at uwo.ca. So lots of options to get in touch uh, if questions pop into your mind after this presentation. Uh, you can find our recording there as well at welcome.uwo.ca slash presentations. So good luck to everyone on your journey to university and good night. Take care, everybody.